You're listening to Comic Reflections, episode 115. I'm your host, Nicholas Prom. And I'm Jeff Barnard, the original Supreme Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> Comic Reflections is brought to you by Rhymes with Geek. You can check out our show, plus plenty of other cool, cool podcasts like the all-new Anti-Fanboy, Feed It Comics, and Superhero Speak at rhymeswithgeek.com. And if you enjoy our show, please don't hesitate to subscribe to us on either iTunes or Stitcher. So, oh, Jeff, before we get started about the comics this uh, today, did you hear uh, they announced the villain for the Justice League movie? Who? It's going to be Brainiac. Ooh, interesting. Yes, I'm glad they're saving Darkseid for later. Yeah. One of the problems with the movies and is they add too many villains. There's uh, the third uh, Superman and the, and that awful Batman with who do they have? They, they have Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy and Bane. Yeah, and none of them are given really... No, they're, they're yeah. all cardboard cutouts. They're terrible. Um, but um, the third Superman... Which Superman are you talking no, about? No, 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 no. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. No, adding, adding multiple villains is tricky, and I think in the superhero team movies, you just have to ramp up the, like, level of... Uh, power that the the singular foe has mm -hmm. um and i right. think going brainiac and then you know if, if they end a trilogy with it being dark side and it's got dark side's cool minions like calabac and granny goodness and stuff that'll be cool mm -hmm. and, and mantis and stuff yeah we haven't seen in a movie a team of evil people they're usually just people just getting together yeah oh they're fighting against batman too that's yeah, kind of, you know, but they'll do a, a, a single team up, and they're usually kind of bad. Yeah, they, they need to do a, I don't know, an evil team that's, you know, and then they argue and all that well, stuff. The Sinister, exactly. the Sinister Six is getting a movie. That'd be interesting. Um, and on television, the Flash's rogues gallery, the rogues, is going to happen. Oh. Going to happen. There's no way. I mean, not the first season, but... Mm -hmm. right there is a second I, season. I mean, they've had Captain Cold and Multiplex now. Who is, Multiplex is a villain that came much later, but mm -hmm. um, oh, excuse me, they, they, they have evil. No, 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 no. He <laughs> multiplies. Excuse me, they're gonna have Captain Cold because I saw it mm. sneak. They're gonna have Grodd at some point because that was a little. I love Grodd. Yeah, and uh, they have had the Weather Weather Wizard mm. already. So, um, and that name, or did they use that? They didn't call him that. Or wait, maybe they did at the very end. Probably the meteorologist. <laughs> <laughs> the meteorologist. But anyway. Um, I think the team of villains, you know, the, the superhero genre in movies and television is here to stay, mm -hmm. and I think we're, we'll, we'll see that. So, um, We want to do, our first one is Fury, and I want to say, this Hydra, I would love to see the origin story of Hydra. I would like to see a, a <clears> lot <throat> of stuff on, and, you know, and they really don't ever do a good villain's comic book, because the villain's got to lose every time. They try right. to have the Joker. But I think now, in modern times, it'd be interesting to see how someone makes this huge, expensive, yeah. intricate... Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a given. Like, oh, it's just an evil organization. Somebody had money and started it. Mm -hmm. Or, and even in the movies, you know, the villain origin, they're like, they'll do it, but it's really kind of ramped down compared to the hero origin. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that... a movie, but I would like to see a comic book on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, not too far from here, we're going to look at some issues of uh, supervillain team up, and it's well, it's doc, it's pretty Doctor Doom centric. It's Doctor Doom and Namor, or Doctor Doom and Magneto, Ooh. or Doctor <laughs> Doom and the Red Skull. Oh, Namor and Doctor Doom. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Yeah, we have some Namor coming up too. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, let's get going with these comics. Um, the first is Strange Tales number one hundred and fifty six. The lead story being the Tribunal. Written and drawn by Jim Steranko, and this stuff is great. Yeah, I think that the flash, um, the splash panel page, yeah, panel. The first one is kind of too busy. There's some really cool stuff, but there's too is a layer too much. You so look at it, you see this is a very Wally Wood splash panel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the things I, I got, like about Steranko. You see the wood, you see the Kirby, but it's distinctly his own. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some cool stuff going on here. The dinosaur. This is actually a plane, I think, and I didn't look it up. But yeah. Maybe somebody 
Now one of our listeners can look that up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's going on with uh, Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh, God. It's complicated. Okay. <laughs> Fury is arrested <clears throat> and put into solitary confinement because he failed this test. Agent Bronson, who is actually Supreme Hydra, oh. which is a bad... Let's send the leader of your evil group in as a spy. The leader sends spies. He doesn't Yeah, spy. you spend someone expendable, but capable. Right. You know, like, why wouldn't he send the Viper? I don't know mm -hmm. if she's introduced at this point yet. She might be a little too early, but uh, send the Viper to infiltrate S.H.I.E.L.D. or mm -hmm. something like that. But yeah, he does a good job. But really, <laughs> it's just absurd. well. It's kind of like why does Captain Kirk go on all the away missions? He's the captain, you know. Yeah, um, it makes it more interesting. Yeah, yeah, out it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That is a problem with Star Trek. I don't mind it though. It's a TV well, show. Well, like right, and here's the thing. So, Wouldn't it be, like, you think the captain was kind of a lame duck if he didn't go on those missions? Yeah. Um, like, real life, yeah, the captain would not be the guy that goes. Yeah, well, but, I mean, maybe. I, mean, I don't know, Napoleon went on the front lines quite a bit. And as a general. You know, and and you know what? Kirk is kind of Napoleon-esque. As a good, but a, but a good guy. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so. So, yeah. anyway. Alright, so. So, um. Bronson wants to steal the dinosaur. Um, God. For the glory of Hydra. Yeah. He, Cut he, off one head to okay. <laughs> replace it. All right. What's the, the girl's name? She is the daughter of the original Hydra, the Supreme Hydra. Oh, that is Viper. Yeah. Okay, she is in this. So I she's a good girl now, but she has a disease or something. Maybe yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody else, because I don't remember Viper ever being good. So go ahead. So they want to take her up. They, they think that she blew up something. On, uh, she's she turned back. She's actually works for Hydra still. Okay. So they're going to. She's <clears> sick. So they're going to take her away in the dinosaur. And so <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really silly. Yeah, it does. Okay, but but Bronson, who is really Supreme Hydra, is taking the dinosaur and the girl back to Hydra, and where he's going to put her in front of. I tribunal. That's where mm -hmm. we get our name. Yeah. Oh, so Sitwell. I think Sitwell is popular. He must be. I mean, Jasper Sitwell. He's an important supporting character in Shield. Uh, as much as I get irritated by him, Shield needs him. It's far, you know, mm -hmm. he's an excellent counterpoint to Fury and Dum Dum because Fury and Dum Dum are all bluster, mm -hmm. and Sitwell is all capability and all being a square. Yeah. And so. Gabe is, okay, so Sitwell gets Dum uh, Dum and Gabe. Oh, yeah, Gabe. Mm hmm. I like him. Yeah, and other has a lame. All right, he's a, a lame joke here. He, okay, Sitwell is showing this miniature bomb and he shows this Inviso pill. Uh huh. And, <laughs> and Gabe says, Sitwell always knew you were out of sight. Yeah, that's kind of bad, but. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure why they even did this. I don't know. Because hmm. okay. you got to fill 12 pages. Right. Well, but <laughs> with all this stuff going on. Right. So he's given this demonstration, and also an explosion. Where the explosion? In Fury's cell. So oh, now what? Fury is dead. Oh. Is it really Fury or is it an LMD? A life model decoy. I guess. Uh, they came on his body. Oh, okay. And so they go to Hydra Island. Man, and it looks like the bottle city of Candor. Yeah. Most people don't know that Long Island used to be called Hydra Island. <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's it's kind of cool. Uh, so, so Fury was alive, stowed away on the dinosaur with um, Bronson and the girl, and he's beating up Hydra agents mm -hmm. as soon as he gets to Hydra Island. Yeah. And, in, and he steals their uniforms... In classic fashion. Right, by, by busting their heads together. Yeah. So <laughs> then, making a quip. <laughs> so then uh, Bronson reveals himself that he is the Supreme Hydra and starts making this speech about conquering the world. And we get a great um, set of panels that basically show all of the then current heroes in the Marvel Universe. We got the Fantastic Four, Spidey, Daredevil, the Avengers, the X Men, 
and the Hulk. Mm -hmm. well, the Hulk with Iron Man and um... the Wasp and Giant Man. Well, I just yeah. I said the Avengers. So. Oh, okay, but yeah. Okay. Um, I guess Hulk was with the Avengers this time. Uh, no, probably not. Mm. But those, that's just showing like all of these guys are going to kneel before Hydra. It's not like they're really together. Everybody else is concerned and worried, and Hulk is just mad. <laughs> <laughs> Shockeroo. Yeah. It's interesting here, this one, we see Ancient Bronson, who is really is Supreme Hydra, and there's these eyes looking over him. I'm not sure what in the world that's about. Well, See? it's it's a very steranko y kind of thing. He likes to, you know, put, uh, you know, do close ups of eyes and stuff. Or but I don't know whose eyes are they? Are, they're are... his, overseeing like the room full of Hydra agents that he's speaking to. Oh, okay, but he's in front, of, so he's overseeing him. So it's, it's kind of weird. It is weird, but I mean, Steranko is employing all of the elements of like really the the other greats in comics. Ditko mm -hmm. is is present in his stuff too. Um, very yeah, some really cool stuff. Hydra's place, I, I like his decorator. <laughs> it's yeah. really well done. And, and yeah, Hydra really, Island. It looks like it was designed by you know the folks who did Barbarella or Salvador Dali. Yeah. And here's a cool. Uh, here we got some scenes of Fury sneaking around. He knocks. He's beating this guy, and then the guy drops his rifle in front of a bunch of other Hydra people. And so he, so Fury says, oh my god, what am I going to do? Oh, I'll just go down and beat these guys up. So he goes down <laughs> and beats them up. Then he puts on these glasses, and he gets zapped in the back because he's looking through the glasses and finding out what's going on. And he's almost finding out who Supreme Hydra was. Yeah. But if he had just waited a little bit, he would have found out. Right, <laughs> these glasses are infrared, and he's seeing beneath Bronson's, Bronson is a mask. Mm -hmm. And the Supreme Hydra is someone we know. Right. <laughs> From the past, mm -hmm. from WW2, and I won't uh, reveal. Oh wait! Then we get the last two-page. It's a two-page splash, and the reveal is Baron Strucker mm -hmm. is the Supreme Hydra. And well, duh, that's like everybody knows that now. But at this time, this was a big reveal. Right. This is like 1968. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 24 years after they said 24 years after World War Two. Yeah, and look at this huge room full of Hydra agents. Mm -hmm. They're saluting him and. Yeah, getting and, the Nazi salute. And oh, uh, they're doing left and right hands. Interesting. Yeah, that's the Hydra salute. Well, no, left and or right. Oh, okay. Some of them are doing both. Some of them are doing left. Some of them are doing right. Oh, that's a little cash. Oh, Heil, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we, um, that used to be our salute. Did it? Yeah. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's from the Romans. Oh. And then um, Hitler took it over and messed it up. He, he messed up that and he messed up Charlie Chaplin mustaches. Well, and the swastika. The swastika, swastika is a very old symbol, mm -hmm. um, but now you can't look at one without thinking of the Nazis. Yeah. So we end on a cliffhanger. Colonel Fury is held captive, and they're going to blast him. So, yeah. So right. so with the backup, the co-feature of this magazine, of course, is Doctor Strange. And this is, I think this is 60, I think it's like 67. So Ditko has left. And this is, let me go, it's... Um, the story is called Umar Walks the Earth, and it's written by Stan Lee with art by Marie Severin, sister of the legendary John Severin, and she's a legend in her own right, but um, did some penciling work at Marvel, but primarily known as their chief colorist for a long time, and also did so for EC Comics back in the 50s. Hmm. So, so yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, so what we have... Yumar is the sister of the Dread Dormammu, and right. she's coming to Earth to cause trouble for Doc Strange mm. and the Ancient One. Right. So, and for some reason, okay, Ancient One sends Doc Strange to the end of the world to get this guy named Zom. Right. So she, he's no, so Ancient One is fighting Umar, and he and Ancient One tells him. There is the famous Amphora of Doom, or I'm not sure what is the legendary Amphora, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a bottle. Sure. Uh, so, 
everyone's afraid of this, so he's, um, but Ancient One tells him, go ahead and open it. Doctor Strange, open it. Yeah. Okay. And Umar doesn't like company, so she, <laughs> him, she destroys uh, Doctor Strange's house. Oh, the Sanctum Sanctorum mm -hmm. in Greenwich Village. Yeah. So, and worse, not only that she disappeared, people, she messes up people's TV reception. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, Oh, it's pretty bad. So then, once the that uh, thing is busted open, mm -hmm. it releases Zom, who's this weird demon guy with fiery hands, and he's man mm -hmm. ugly as sin. Yeah, but I was kind of disappointed. Were you? Yeah. You wanted him to look cooler. Yeah, he kind of looks kind of goofy. He, he like, kind of you know what he looks like he looks like Sloth from uh, the Goonies. Hmm. I did not see the Goonies. So. Oh, okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not educated. Awkwardness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. So Doctor Strange talks to him and says, Hey, um, how about coming and fight this Umar person? And he says, Okay. <laughs> so they go. And Umar has called Ancient One to Stonehenge, where he Where the demons dwell, where the banshees live and they do live well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that is from Spinal Tap. It's yes. a great movie. Yes. So, um, they're fighting. And I love the the glow around their hands so you know they're doing magic. Yeah. It is cool. Umar is good looking, but she's mean and nasty. Yeah. Like a Ditko woman. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh. So, a big battle. Or a Bill Everett woman. Yeah. They're kind of like that, too. So, um, Umar fights against Zom, and Zom kicks her butt, so she leaves. So yeah. now they got to fight Zom. It's like, way to go, Doc Strange. That was a dumb, yeah. you know, you like created a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, uh, that was okay, but... Uh... Okay. Yeah. It's no Kona, Monarch of Monster Isle. Oh. <laughs> Remember that series? Oh, yeah. It was like... Terrible, but kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. It was bad, but there was something really great about it. Because <laughs> yeah. it was so weird. Mm -hmm. Remember, Kona looked like B. Arthur. Oh. <laughs> kind yeah. of. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, weirdness. But uh, So the next book we've got is The Strange Tales number 158. Yeah, we're missing one in between. So sue us. When what happened? <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll figure it out. But this, the lead story, continuing with Nick Fury and S.H.I.E.L.D., is called Final Encounter, uh, written and drawn, again, by the great Jim Steranko. And the splash panel is Baron Strucker, with, now armed with his Satan Claw. Uh, but basically, he's got Nick Fury held over his shoulders, and he's going to like slam him on the ground or against the wall. It's WrestleMania 17. No. <laughs> Why didn't he make more of those? If he had 100 people with Satan claws, he'd be kicking butt. Because he wanted to be, like, it's a oh. distinct thing for him because he's the Supreme Hydra. He yeah. could have had two Satan claws. <laughs> right? I don't know. Or Satan boots. <laughs> and he'd be like, Satan claws is coming to town. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So, <sighs> anyway. So, so it's the big old, so Nick Fury must have busted loose somehow. Mm -hmm. And it's a big old battle with Baron Strucker. And it's just raging. It's really cool, and, and Nick is having trouble. Yeah. So he picks up a gun, and uh, Strucker grabs it and just crushes it. I love the renewal of this decades-old rivalry enemy mm -hmm. ship that they have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they don't like each other. Oh, yeah. But that's just great stuff. Yeah. So, him, no, Strucker crushing, is it Strucker? Or Strucker. Strucker. Okay. He's crushing the, the, the gun. With the Satan Claw. With the Satan Claw. And that gives Fury a second breath. I mean, right. He, it, it gives him a chance because Strucker's showing off, basically. Mm -hmm. it's a nice Kirby crackle on that panel, too. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, very nice. So I think it's, it's so funny. Is Marvel, it's like they didn't dictate, hey, draw like Kirby. Mm -hmm. But they said, look at Kirby. And they basically used his stuff as like style guides. And that's kind of... Yeah. yeah, that right there is very Kirby-esque. No. Oh, absolutely. A lot of stuff in the lot in here looks very just, like Jack Kirby. Yeah, Strucker is just leaning and, and shaking, his, shaking fist his fist and it's just, oh, man. But, oh. All right, so he electrocutes or electrifies the ground. 
Huh. So, uh oh. So Fury is he is not immune to electricity, so he's worried. So he he jumps up and then he jumps down on Strucker. Fight and fight and fight. Fight, <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> yeah, this is like an all battle issue. Mm -hmm. It's 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 just solid fighting. It's really great. Very yeah. extra. Yeah, and here comes Hydra guys, and where have they been? So, mm -hmm. And so um, Nick jumps into this water with his shirt off again. He's had his shirt off the whole time. Yeah, what is up with that man? He, he needs a better tailor. <laughs> So they shoot at him, and he and he doesn't come up. So it's been ten minutes. Oh, he must be dead. Uh, we don't need to check on him. He's dead. Hmm. <laughs> you never see villains do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. The entire point of the thing is, Strucker has a death. What is it called? A, it's a death something. The death ball or something. Okay. Or, spores that's going to fall on the earth and kill everybody unless you give him you surrender to hydra right okay so all right so um here comes uh, nick comes up out of the water yay and in a hydra, hydra. yeah don't tell us how he does that he probably greased a hydra guy and and took his uniform yeah but he had some <laughs> pellets underneath his um waistband uh-huh so oh the pellets of what Oh, oh, to breathe underwater. Oh, okay. Oh, one thing he does in, in the Early? park. Oh, okay. He takes his belt and grabs the Satan Claw and jerks it off. How can you jerk off? How? <laughs> no pun intended. Oh, How like, can you jerk? I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. How can you right, right. jerk someone's glove off? It just. Well, I don't know. It's like an. Kind of like. Think like an, an a gauntlet. Yeah. I don't know. I. It's kind of far fetched, but it's one of those things you have to chalk up to it. It being a comic book, right? So okay, you know if you, you know you know, if you went back and you read the pulps or you watched the old movie serials, lots of those things are like that wouldn't work, right? And comic books are the evolution of that, mm -hmm. and they're so tied to that history. So okay. some contrived escapes are uh, warranted, I think. So yeah. Oh, we see two Struckers fighting. They what? One. <laughs> so, so they're fighting. Oh, we need and, to cue up and, that song from Highlander. Oh yeah, they can only be one. <laughs> oh, so one of them convinces, hey, he's got a mask on. So they grab an, and and then it's Nick Fury. So they throw him, and he Nick Fury runs into. Something that electrocutes him. Right. But it turns out that was Strucker that Fury had disguised with the, with a, a copy of his own face. Mm -hmm. Weirdness. Yeah. But uh, so it Strucker, works. Strucker gets the girl and then he pulls off. Oh, it's Nick Fury. Yay. Yeah. And so they split for uh, Shield HQ and leave Hydra Island, right? Uh, oh, but only a few more seconds until the oh, Death Spore explodes. All right. And they look and say, oh, that looks like the death spore on our table. Nah. And then <laughs> blows up and kills everybody in Hydra Island. <laughs> and that's the end. Hey, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty satisfying. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, very nice. And very well done. Yeah, Steranko was great. I mean, anytime I get to look at his shield or Captain America stuff, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm enjoying the holy living crap out of it. Yeah. You know, why didn't <clears throat> some of the other... Superheroes help out. I mean, couldn't Thor run around and see? Well, here's the thing. At this point, I mean, you're going to see Fury. This is the only time you see Fury in anything other than a supporting role in the other Marvel books. Mm -hmm. So why not let him have the spotlight? Maybe nice. the superheroes don't know about it. You know? Guest appearances are fine, but you don't mm -hmm. want to overdo it because then your central figure seems kind of like he can't do anything right. on his own. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I mean, he does have a whole organization of dudes to help is, him. Yeah, the answer is it's a comic book, but, <laughs> but the world's about to die. So, oh, oh let's Fury handle this. You know, you, you go out. Well, and if they don't know, because Hydra's a secret spy of evil organization. Yeah, they can go, hey, Nick, you need my help or <laughs> some, you know. Okay. So, let's yeah, talk okay. up to the the co-feature. It's Doctor Strange again, and uh, the story is called "The Sands of Death," written by. 
Roy Thomas, my my number one writer in comics ever, and um, and probably the number one comics historian hmm. as well, um, are definitely a chief, uh, you know, uh, chief among them. Uh, with art by uh, Marie Severn on pencils and inked by Herb Trimpey, which is very nice. Hmm. And I think that really uh, Trimpey working on this really adds something. I mean, Marie Severn's okay, but I think her pencils are a bit bland. Hmm. This this kind of beefs them up a bit. So yeah, you can't be bland on Doctor Strange. That's yeah, dark. and especially when you're going to face off against the Living Tribunal, who mm. is so this is such a Gonzo character. It, this is a like this is Marvel being cosmic, and uh, boy, this guy uh, definitely fits the bill. He's got one hair but three faces, and each face is or four is it four? three three okay tri tribunal oh three. yeah. So, um, but the Living Tribunal, he's, each one of his faces is an aspect of justice or vengeance mm -hmm. or something. And, like, one face is fully uncovered, one is half covered, and the other one is fully covered, and they're all, like, by this kind of cloak headdress thing. And his head floats above his body, and he's got, like, a giant oversized Ken, you know, body. Because look at his hands, they don't really have fingers. Oh. Uh. Yeah. But, um... He's cool. Yeah, I've yeah. always thought the Living Tribunal was an interesting character. Yeah. Equity, revenge, and necessity. Yeah. All right. So because they let out Zom, Zom, they want to destroy the world. The Living Tribunal is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because destroying Zom let out lots of magic. So lots of people who had dormant magical abilities now have undormant. <laughs> they oh, they had latent magic potential and now they have are able to tap into that. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot of sorcery to be going around. Yeah, it's going to destroy the universe. Yeah. So mainly this is just a huge argument between Man. Doctor Strange yeah. and the Living Tribunal. Trying to save humanity with his words, mm -hmm. which is interesting. And that's a very typical Marvel Comics uh, trope. Um, especially on these cosmic things, these have these like godlike beings who could destroy the earth, and we have to, you know, convince them that humanity mm -hmm. is worthy of living. Yeah, we um, get examples of people who are getting magic. magic. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and there's a great splash panel. Oh yeah, of like all other the destruction of the world. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Wow. Destruction of the world's cool. <laughs> this is really great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so they they give him a task, and so the tribunal task, gives Doctor Doctor Strange a task. Yeah. Okay. And fix your cloak, which was destroyed in the battle. So right. he fixes his cloak. <laughs> yeah, the cloak of gravitation yeah. was was burned, and there was only a little bit of it left. But he was able to remake it with magic. Mm -hmm. And so then the Living Tribunal backs off. I don't get why that works. Yeah, what? Because he's a good tailor? I don't know. But so they get these hourglass of sand falling down, which is a great image. I would think that the Living Tribunal would be a great, like a character that the Specter would end up have to deal with, you know? Yeah. Or Doctor Fate. Mm hmm. You know? But I mean, Doctor Strange is essentially Doctor Fate for Marvel, so. Right. So, so he has only a lim Doctor Strange only has limited amount of time to fix everything. So well, we'll see what happens. Well, or we will we'll not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but well. uh, I think in that issue, there's a fan letter from Bill Mantlo a few years before he would actually break into comics. Oh. So that's kind of fun, I think. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so Strange Tales got canceled for a while and then revived a few years later. And here's an issue from the revival, continuing that numbering. Mm -hmm. It's Strange Tales number 171, and it's, uh, I think, the third of five issues spotlighting the then-new character, Brother Voodoo. Mm -hmm. And this story is called March of the Dead, um, written by Len Wein, one, another one of my favorite comic book writers, um, penciled by Gentleman Gene Colon, yep. and, um, or Gene the Dean, and uh, inked by Frank Giacoya. And uh, I like Giacoya's ink. The thing with Gene Colon is... His stuff is great, but if he doesn't have the right inker, oftentimes it looks pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, Giacoya is kind of middle of the road. It kind of gives him a bit of a Don Heck, or shades of Don Heck, or... Um, uh, dang it, I forgot who this was. It's um, Who was the artist that uh, Pete Morisi emulated? 
Oh, you know who I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I can't think of his name. I always, I'm trying to think Jim Mooney, but I know that's not right. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, we'll just carry on. Maybe I'll think of it. But uh, anyway, Brother Voodoo, he's a he, another black superhero, and mm -hmm. it's he's cool ish. Yeah, I, I thought him kind of dull. Yeah, I mean, he's capable, yeah. and he's he himself is not very stereotyped, although his costume sure is. Well, he's dressed like an African with a cape and an African like animal an skin. What or is something. it on his ankles, anklets? I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of. And he's barefoot. Yeah. <laughs> he's walking around in the swamp barefoot. So. Yeah. But he's a guy with magic powers that are kind of linked to voodoo. Mm -hmm. Hence the name. Yeah. I don't know. And he's got a, I don't know what you call the white stripe. He's kind of got that skunk stripe uh, of gray in his hair. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like the second invisible kid in, in the Legion of Superheroes. Mm -hmm. um, who was a cool character. And the bad girl in Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, that's right. <laughs> So, oh. so Brother Voodoo is in a graveyard, of course, yeah. and he is uh, attacked by Zuvembis. Yeah, and which... let me explain why that is a word, because what they really are is zombies. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, although it would soon be revised, the comics code, you cannot have the word zombie. You can't have zombies. So, Marvel just created the word Zuvembi. Which is like, why wouldn't you hold off having a voodoo character if you can't have zombies? Because zombies and voodoo, that's kind of like, really well, go together. You know, I can see trying to keep comic books, especially because they're mostly kids are reading them. Sure. Keeping keep them safe, but yeah. zombies are crying out loud. I right. Mean, and this is before, and really this is before like the flesh-eating zombies that we have today. This is just like, they're just a shambling... You know, yeah, ghoul. Who grab and take and yeah, you know, they may kill. Uh, I guess they yeah, may kill people. But they just like like people with vacant stares usually. Mm -hmm. But these have been like comic book readers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but these zombies look cool. I mean, Gene Colan drawing these guys coming up out of the graves and stuff. Very mm -hmm. neat. Um, so Brother Voodoo uh, fights these guys with his bare hands. He doesn't using magic against them. No, he tries to use magic. He tries to get his brother's spirit into one. And oh, that's work. right, because Brother Voodoo, it's Jericho Drum and his dead brother kind of together are Brother Voodoo. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, it's weird. Uh, he, it's Brother Voodoo because he's black and he's got a brother in him. Yeah, so it's like a double entendre. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be uh, hilarious as uh, Greg Gumbel and Brian Gumbel are Brother Voodoo? No, is there a great? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. I, I don't <laughs> that know. Would, no, I'm, I'm making a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a joke on Family Guy where, like, that they had a, a show where they were bicycle police, mm. Greg Gumbel and Bryant Gumbel, and it was called Gumbel to Gumbel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it was just silly. I really hate that show, but occasionally they're very funny. That was early on pretty early on in the series so it was still when it was kind of riding high mm -hmm. so all right um we found out who's in charge of Vimbies is baron sandy and this is kind of a samadai 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 oh i had no idea yeah okay. it's okay this is there is a james bond movie which is pretty good it's the only roger moore film that's good it's All of the other ones are bad. I know the one you're talking about. This is the one with Jane, C Jane Seymour. Yeah. And he's fighting like these zo these uh, voodoo supervillains. Yeah. And, well, there's one... Um, there's a voodoo houngan. And there's right? a baron. And he wears a top yeah. hat. And he's yeah. really, really cool. Jeffrey Holder, I think his name yeah. is. And he's great. He used to sell 7-Up or something. Ha, 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 I adore 7-Up. <laughs> okay. You know, or... Uh, yeah, but he, he's a great character. That's a good show, too. And he's got the redneck sheriff who I enjoy. So. <laughs> oh. So, so this I think this character is taken off on that. Yeah. But he's wearing a Napoleonic uniform. Yeah. And he's got a... He's got a cool cane with a skull on top of it. Which makes sense. Wasn't Haiti a French colony? Mm -hmm. That makes perfect sense, then. And they're on the, the first... Um, colonies that revolted successfully against their um, colonizers. Yes. And uh, Creole, the language, is a mixture of like French and something else, right? Mm, 
yeah, French, it's kind of French, English, and probably some African, but sure. Uh, but there's so many languages in Africa. So it's right. Just, mm, there's no African. It just happened to be a continent in Africa with a bunch of stuff in there. You know, the continent of Africa, like, is gigantic, and like most of the other inhabited continents could like fit on it, like overlap it. Um, except of course for Asia, right, which is the largest. But yeah, you, know, you could fit Europe in there a couple of times. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it's it's just massive. Just our maps are kind of like skewed politically to make to um, to reduce it in importance and I scale. I think yeah, that's just how it happens to make a round map or to make a square map. That's what happens. Sure, you, you cannot you cannot change. But see, it. but it, it tweak or uh, it skews our perception of the dark continent. Yeah, because. I had no idea that it was just, I mean, obviously it's a big place, a continent's big, but how huge is, it's bigger than America, like a couple of times over, mm -hmm. that's huge. Right. So, anyway. You gotta use a Mercator map, which is the one that looks like a peeled orange. Oh, okay. You know, it's, it's, it's flat, and there's cuts in it. Oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Um, and SCTV, the Russians took over SCTV, you know, and um, <laughs> I was just this, watching this episode, and they had I'm fucking victim by the Russia, <laughs> and he puts in Texas, oh big state of Texas, <laughs> yeah right, and lots of room, and then it's really, <laughs> yeah, the size of con is is not important, right? But yeah, you know, it is kind of um, is Russia really that huge though? Oh God, it's ma it was at the time massive. Oh, okay. Bar yeah, easily. Oh, the Soviet Union. Soviet Union. Yeah. yeah. Russia is not so big, but it's still pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Back okay. to Baron Semide. Yeah. Semide. Whatever. Oh. Let's include that syllable, however we pronounce it. Semide. Okay. Yeah. So, oh. it's brother Vo some guy comes asking for brother Voodoo for help. We get a flashback. Oh. And we get and, um, a black guy and a white guy, so they know it's got to be serious. <laughs> they, they, they ask him for help. Okay. He says, okay, I'll come down. And the white, guy, right. the white guy always has to be older. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't think he ever says anything. Even either. though the black guy is very oh, distinguished yeah, looking, he's really good. Oh, at the very end, he says, will you help us or won't you? Yeah. So sure. I, I and it's against Baron Semidai was, you know, doing super villainy things with the Zavembis, so. Mm hmm <sighs> So, <laughs> they, they come... All right, <laughs> Brother Voodoo comes to Haiti and he gets attacked by these people, and then he has this drum magic. Of course, and he does. drum, and then I don't know, and it, it freaks him out. The bad guys, and he beats him up. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I don't know. It's so. So then we get to the point where he's captured. Now he's in there, captured by Aim. Advanced idea Indeed. mechanics. So, That's so fine. Aim and Baron Semidai were in league with each other, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because they're, they're together. Right. So, so and they've got Brother Voodoo strapped to a rocket or something. It's a thing that makes people into um, zombies. Yeah. Uh, I'll never get. To <laughs> we can just that. say zombie, you know. Yeah. So okay, he monologues. There. <laughs> some. Semidai does. Semidai. Uh, <laughs> he looks like a ghoul himself. Yes, he does. So he's been changing regular folks. They've been capturing people in, mm -hmm. in the jungle and making them to zombies. Okay. So is he killing them and then making them No, they're horse? alive. Oh, okay. Which is kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Be... They're enslaved, but at least they're not dead. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That's what I'm... Okay. <sighs> so they try to zap... Brother Voodoo and make him a, a zombie. The yeah. brother zombie, I guess. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Why? Because brother zombie talks to reptiles. And the reptile chewed into one of the cables and shorted out the machine. Oh, yeah. Which is... I don't know. Man, this, the brother Voodoo is almost as funny as the Smothers Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Oh. And you remember the Smothers Brothers? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Mom always liked you best. <laughs> I remember the the yo-yo tricks and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Okay. Anyway, that was their second incarnation. Their first incarnation was during the early, the late sixties, early. Yeah, 70s. but uh, sorry that I saw them when they came in the revival. But mm -hmm. I was so, young. Oh, I'm sure you can YouTube the old ones. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
So there's a big fight, and he, he destroys the Brother Voodoo does. Brother Voodoo destroys the complex, which is underneath the grave, and he changes all the Zubimbi zombies into regular folks, and they run away. And he and Zombie is crushed by a machine that just that um, turns people into Zubimbis. So and it's killed. Mm -hmm. And the good folks are rescued, and Brother Voodoo comes out on top. Yeah, so everyone's happy. Yay! Well, that's pretty good. Um, I I thought he was a boring character. Yeah, he's, he's no boring. Black Panther. He's not. Black Panther is a king, and he's, and he's a super scientist, and he kicks butt. And that isn't. He's interesting. Yeah. Brother Voodoo is boring. Yeah. And um, are we talking about African American? No. Well, He's not African American. He's just African. No, he's yeah. African American. He is. No, he's from Haiti. But he's an American also. That's not what they mean when they say African American. Okay. It's when you not, I, I guess I don't know. It's a stupid term. It's, okay. It's, it's it's imprecise. Well, what's uh, wrong with just saying, "Oh, he's a black guy"? Yeah. You well, know? you're not supposed. To. I think I don't. Know. I don't know. Like, okay. like all right, but I don't think it's a bad word. word so anyway. I don't think I I think that they yeah you know, I don't think so either but. Um, I don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a cool black character that's interesting. Brother Voodoo is not. I like to see more black characters. Yeah. And Black Panther is very cool. He's got power. He's interesting. He's got a personality. And he's got, you know. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's really interesting. What's Black Panther up to now? You know, I want to know. I don't care about Brother Voodoo. He bores me. <laughs> right. Um, Oh, um, Luke Cage. He's interesting. He's got problems. He's interesting. He gets you know? mad. And, yeah. And, and, and right. And yes, he's I'm a like, black exploitation character, but he's more interesting than other black exploitation characters like Black Goliath or even Black Lightning, who I do like. Mm. Oh, and Black Goliath is no. I take that back. Black Goliath is interesting because Bill Foster was a scientist, and you know he's cool. No, no, Bill Foster is interesting, so I take that back. But yeah, I mean. There are white lame-o characters who yeah. are more in proportion, probably. Yeah. But I would like to have more. I think the Black, black Panther is definitely the best black superhero. Mm -hmm. Luke, Luke Cage, Cage and being it. second. And um, I'm not sure if any Gabe. Um, Gabe from uh, from Shield. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. Um, I like him, and I want to read like the whole series of the Godzilla because that's his book. Gabe oh. is chasing Godzilla. That he's I the lead. Read some of those. Yeah, we did for the show. Did we? Yeah. Okay. Because um, I read this because her trippy drew that series was really good, mm -hmm. and I read the, I did I read the one where Hydra falls. I think I had a big book of them. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, Nick Fury and Shield. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's good. Um. You know that the, my favorite black character is the assistant editor in Spider Man. Oh, Robbie him. Robertson. Yeah, he, he is great. He's you know, he, he is he's by square, far, but he's cool. And I don't even think he's square. He's straight. He's right, honest. Right. He's mm -hmm. decent. He's a really upstanding guy. And he calls Jonah Jameson on his crap. And I like that. Um, and But Jonah, even though they disagree, he always respects him. He mm -hmm. fires him like all the time, but then hires him right back. Right. Because he's not really firing him. It's like when Fred Flintstone gets fired. Yeah. You know, or George <laughs> Jetson. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, Robbie Robertson... Um, as far as supporting characters go, absolutely best black character in comics. Mm -hmm. For leads, um, yeah, it's got to be Black Panther. Although mm -hmm. John Stewart, the Green Lantern, he's oh, excellent. I've not read him, so. Oh, okay, he's great. Um, and I think Black Light, I Black. A bit pride. No, I just haven't, right. haven't read him. So. <laughs> um, but uh, Black Lightning's kind of interesting because he's a school teacher also. Which I kind of like. Interesting. Hmm. It's still kind of stereotypical. It's an inner city thing. It's still very black exploitation. But yeah. he's okay. But there are people like Luke Cage, and I'm kind of, and kind of known. And you know, it's sort of, yeah, it's a fine line between representing blacks and being stereotypical. Well, right. And representation is important. It's important just to have them. And then when you have the characters, like, try to seem like real folks. Yes. You know. So, okay. John Stewart and is like the only American black superhero that really mm -hmm. seems like a real guy. I think and Luke. Okay, there's um, stereotypical movies. Oh, Brother Warthel and Raising Arizona kind of made fun of poor white trash. Yeah, but they like the 
you knew that the people who were making the movie liked them. Right. So it made it okay. Right. Fargo, I thought that the same um, Coen Brothers hated um, people from Fargo. Right? I, I, they just had contempt. That's, um, let's see, in the movie, the first producers, they made a lot of gay jokes. Yeah. Gay people like them, like these movie, this that movie, and yeah. and cause Mel Brooks gay likes guys. gay guys, and exactly. hey, and Zero Mostel was a gay guy. Was he? I thought didn't you say that? I oh. thought he was. I don't remember saying that. I, I swear to God, we talked pre-show last week. You said, "Oh yeah, Zero Mostel was gay." Could have swear, no. but I haven't looked it up, so it doesn't I matter. Said you were gay. No. Oh, <laughs> thanks. No. Oh no. Um, that's okay. I don't. But where are we going with this again? It's okay with the <laughs> with the stereotypes and all that, and in, in, in depicting minorities. I think the importance of liking the characters, having an understanding of them, and you can make fun of them maybe and show them a little goofy, and that makes it interesting. If you put them on a pedestal and they cannot do any wrong or something like that, that makes them boring. They got to sure. have flaws. Well, right, then they seem real, mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, and you know, and it's it's the black guy isn't just the butler, you know. Mm -hmm. They've got a character with some meat or a role with some right. meat to it, right on. Yeah. So, or it can be a super intelligent like Benson was really fun. Oh, Benson so. was great. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the show Benson, but, but Robert Duvall was great. great. So, all right. yeah. Hey, let's get back to comics. Hey, Dagar. yeah, Dagar the Invincible, and this is issue number twelve. And the story is called Forest of Fear, which is, don't call stories that. That's such a generic, lame kind of title. We've read a couple of stories called, about other comics called for, with a story called Forest of Fear. You should be Forest of Consternation. <laughs> oh. So what's going on with Jagar? Okay. He's in the Forest of Fear. Yeah, with Graylin, <laughs> and Graylin gets attacked by an ape man, and he runs off. So um, Jagar says, oh, I'll run the other, oh, let's go the other way. Oh, and, one thing, uh, as usual, oh. this as with the whole series, was written by Don Glutt and drawn by uh, Jesse Santos. Sorry, go ahead. So, um, they go the opposite way the guy ran off. So, it was just kind of not a bad idea. But it's the wrong idea, because that's what they were... That was a trap by the other eight men to get them to go into the forest of fear. <laughs> what if they run into Turok? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it is another gold key comic. Is it? That'd be interesting. Yeah. This does have ties to uh, the occult files of Dr. Spectre. Hmm. Interesting. Um, because the dark gods that uh, the Dagar is against are also the same ones that uh, Dr. Spectre fights. And Durak, who shows up again in this issue, um, mm. I think had he was either in Dr. Spectre or had a backup series in that book. Yeah. So. Okay. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. They go out in the forest of fear, and um, they hear someone, hey, I need help. And so, actually, we see Graylin actually working. Now I was saying, man, Graylin is this MacGuffin. Oh, she gets captured, blah, 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 right. blah. So, but she's actually hacking away at these vines, and they find Durak. Yeah. And Durak has been infected by some, like, tree disease or something, mm -hmm. some curse. And so they've got to stop it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they say they got captured by the tree people or something. <laughs> oh, the, the spears that the eight men have have, you no, know, kill you and turn you into a tree. Oh, so they must be poison tipped or something. Mm -hmm. Or are they magic with evil magic in them? Evil magic, I believe. Okay. So there is a god that died, and they put his ashes. Jesus? No, uh, I'm kidding. Uh, That's bad. <laughs> and he, um. And they grew a tree over him, so and that they worship the tree. Uh, so they capture him. Um, the, Who? Hi. The, the eight men capture our trio. Yes. Again. So Dagar is not so invincible after all. Yeah, he doesn't seem invincible at all. I mean, he doesn't really get hurt, mm -hmm. but it's not like he's invulnerable. It's hyperbole. Right. Well, you got to name him something. Yeah. Dagar the Mighty Strong. I don't know. That <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. The eight king. Is... I think it, if it's so and so, the something or other, mm. it, the word, the the second part should be an adverb, like the adventurer or the freebooter or you know, like Conan. Those are nouns. Oh shit! 
Excuse me. <laughs> I oh, you said you mean just English fail. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ben speaking English low. Man, uh, I'm the one who shouldn't say that. Yeah, I know. I'm like, wait a second, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> okay, Eight King is going to have his way with Graylin. That makes uh, Dagar mad. Well, yeah. So Dagar escapes. And he, he cuts loose uh, Durak. Yeah. Or is it Durak? Durak. Durak. It is an A. Could be uh, uh, the short A. Pretty sure it's Durak. All right. But what you can say whatever you like. Okay. So, all right. So um, he, he sends Durak <laughs> <laughs> and to go get the God's heart while Dagar goes um, gets Graylin. Okay. And Greenland's attacked by a huge ape, which looks really cool. He's yeah. Like, he's not King Kong size. He's about five times bigger than a regular ape. That much bigger? Really? It, the, um, the ape is like eight feet tall. I thought it no, or maybe eight, so. I don't know. It's it's a big it's a big gorilla, okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Grape Ape. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> what an awful show that was. Hey. Oh. <laughs> grape Ape. Grape Ape. Bad. Just because it was a purple giant gorilla, I think. I like McGilla. McGilla gorilla was kind of cool. Uh, kind of. No. McGilla gorilla was just like Wally Gator, only a gorilla. Uh, like exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. The ape is about ten feet tall, so yeah. it's pretty big, and he's green. So. Yeah. <sighs> so, Durak cures himself. Did he and drink from this magic chalice or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just yeah, there's a Deus about, Ex Machina. Yeah, indeed. Just a thing that solved the problem right there. You know, it might be a MacGuffin too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean, but I think that the hand of God, Deus Ex Machina, it comes out of the blue. You yeah. Know, or something. Well, or we didn't have any foreshadowing of that goblet that was going to cure him, did we? Yeah. Oh, okay. He said to get it. Oh, yeah. Duh. Okay. I'm an idiot. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Dagar and, and the ape fight, and he sends a uh, ape into the woods, and the woods tangle him up, and then he breaks free because he's a bull gorilla, so then he's going to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Graylin um, actually earns her keep finally and, and hits the ape in the back with an axe. Wow. So then the god comes up, and he's really mad. And he looks awesome. It yeah, is this does. evil tree god, and mm -hmm. it's so cool. And he kills the crap out of the ape men, mm -hmm. or turns them back into regular apes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they're, not, they're kind <clears throat> of like Neanderthals. Yeah. Um, yeah, or something. So And then they ride off. I do like Durak. Yeah, he is cool. That's yeah. Cool enough to get his own backup series, you know. So. Indeed. Well, that doesn't mean he's cool, but it, he deserves it. Somebody thought it, he was cool enough. So. Yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, I think that's the that's it for that episode. Mm -hmm. Do you have any yeah. witty sign-off? No longer will I suffer your crude indignities. Your luck has run its course. <laughs>